I know uh, child development and and systems working with children and families. Um, I got a, a license in family child marriage counseling just as I was leaving the country <laughs> to go into the Peace Corps. And we truly stumbled into the refugee work. I mean, we had no intentions. We kept hearing from other WTs about, oh, you can go to Thailand and get this experience of working in the camps. So that felt very appealing because Peace Corps hadn't really had much of a job for us. And I was supposed to assist three people from CRS who had been brought over. There was an Indian doctor, an Australian nurse, and an Australian nun. And, while I, and I was so excited to come back and learn how to do this from them, because I had no clue. Um, and while we were away, there was a political incident in Thailand where the royal family came to Khao Dong and were going to take busloads of kids and move them to a separate camp set up by the royal family. And these three stood in front of the buses and refused to let them move the children. They were kicked out of the country. So I arrive in Bangkok and they're saying, well, you're gonna go down and run the program. <laughs> that brought me to the most important thing I learned, I think in that first week was that I didn't know anything. And I was totally dependent on the Cambodian staff, the, Khmer, the three people that were just incredible. Initially, I would start, you know, they would tell me what the issues were because we had these children's centers set up and they'd be telling me the things that needed to be done. So just being able to totally rely on them because they're the ones who had the information and the expertise, they would tell me what they needed. I was sort of the front man, you know, to take that into the uh, meetings and try to get back what they thought they needed. But I think the thread in working with children goes back to that Anna Freud study who first identified that the children who were separated during the war, the ones that were sent out to the countryside, supposedly to be safe, fared much worse later when they interviewed them than the kids who remained with their parents in the bomb shelters and went through the blitz. That first realization that you really did have to keep kids with families in those settings of trying to develop care for kids, really looking at the concept that children do look to the adults around them to, to perceive what the situation is. So we couldn't really impose what we thought a child's experience would be because it might be quite different depending on what the family had given them, you know, in terms of uh, their reactions to it. And I think that was a big shift. This is the absolute first thing I wrote, an experiment in the care of unaccompanied minors in refugee camps. I think, oh. <laughs> and I don't take credit for this. I mean, it's what we'd learned from the people there. And the first two sentences are, in an attempt to meet the immediate needs of the unaccompanied minors and to also consider the long-range effects of camp life on these children, the concept of the community-based children's centers was developed. Basically, it's an effort to restore the semblance of a community life within the camp itself to a group of children who might otherwise be placed into the institutional setting. It just seems like this thread of the, the basis of operating from where the child is and what their, their perception or understanding of the situation is that they're in. And I was remembering a story there of one of their workers, a group had gone, they were flying in, you know, we flew in there um, and landed in an area where some fighting happened to be going on and one of the national workers was taken by the other the rebel group the other side and they you know flew back and worked out the agreement to have him released and returned and when they went to pick him up he's walking across the field carrying a stack of papers and when they got there he had tracing forms that had been completed <laughs> said when they saw what I did they wanted me to fill it all out and get the information about their children and families so they could trace for them <laughs> they, that story always stayed with me it's just the example of you know the human element everyone wants to find their children everyone wants to be sure that their children are safe and we talk about these larger images thoughts of why people do drop kids off or send them for education that it is that uh, you know, that we would talk about the analogy of a burning building. I mean, a parent will separate from a child in order to save them. The one of the things I learned in looking at child development over the years is that there's some incredibly different concepts or different cultural beliefs about child development, but they all basically follow the same sequence. A child is going to learn how to walk. Every child is going to learn to talk. You know, all those things happen regardless of uh, the, the differences in the cultural. So there's these commonalities I think we can base our work on. I always felt that 
this, this idea of child development of what's considered a problem, like now we're looking at mental health of kids, it's what interferes with their engaging with their environment. They're just, they're little sponges of information, you know, every system in their body is absorbing. And if that gets disrupted or interrupted, that's where the problem comes from. It's like when you fly in with a helicopter or you come in with a car, all the kids run, you know, to see who's coming and what's going on. And you walk around to see which kid didn't come out of their hut. I think one of the things in Thailand we discovered too was the gap between those of us who sort of threw ourselves into the field and were working 12 and 14 hours a day and then the need to write about it. And then there were other people, not commonly called the academics, you know, who weren't coming to the field. But I think it became a pretty urgent need that you try to write about this experience at the same time. It becomes sort of the institutional memory uh, for that experience. And I'm hearing a lot just in these discussions about the need, the thought that you don't just pick up a program and transfer it here and expect that it's going to work. Because I, certainly when I was writing field guides or guidelines, it was always with the thought that this is sort of a basic, hopefully helpful model and that you changed it to fit whatever situation you need. Some of the work I did with UNICEF, and we're trying to write about or begin to introduce some of the psychosocial aspects. And it wasn't that there was opposition to it, but it just always been viewed as sort of physical safety. What I've done has always been focused on psychosocial needs or issues of children and families. So it's, I think it's staying with that sense of working from within the community, which isn't new. I mean, we've all talked about, I think today, some version of that. In Thailand, we're sort of trying to develop questions to ask people to, to train, you know, local workers or so parasocial workers to ask to find, to locate where kids were, pulling on that, um, cultural information, who are the people who have the information we need, because we certainly don't have it. And then we were looking at a child who gets disrupted from child development, how do we restore the systems that did care for children before the war, not that we have to reinvent what they did by moving kids into institutions, but how do we shore up the community to return whatever it is that they need to go back to those systems that they had, you know, perfectly capable of, of doing before. But basically, just how to build from within the community back up to levels where families can engage and take care of kids on their own. One of the last things I did was work through UNICEF a year after the tsunami with some excellent Thai social workers. We were able, because of the tremendous amount of money that was poured into that situation a year later, we had the luxury of working with the schools of social work, Thomasat, and helping them look at their social work program in general. And there was nothing in the program at that time that related to working with children. We were able to develop six short courses based on different aspects of child care. I mean, one was child soldiers, I think. One was emergency responses, working with teenagers and adolescents. Uh, and one, I'm sure, was on child development. And sort of attach those to the university so professors could pull those out and be able to do some work that was made more focused on children. But I think probably the most valuable thing we we're able to do was to take some of the money from UNICEF and provide a space for, I think there were maybe five or six Thai women and one man who was a lawyer. Um, who carried all of the institutional memory of what social work was in Thailand at that time. And we were able to get the start of a, uh, a Thai clinical casebook. So you know, I thought it was one of the best things UNICEF probably did in country, was give them the money to do that in the space. And the last thing, I did the assessment um, in Brownsville with the migrant children. I kind of hate to end with this because it was making me think about what we were just talking about. The system of non-tracing that was delivered was very intentional, and this facility had no idea why they were there, how long they were going. They didn't even know where they were, you know, in the country. They just knew they were in this large facility of uh, about 900 other boys. Young children that were sent and placed into so-called foster families, I mean, I think there were some agencies doing a good job of providing immediate care, but there was a whole contingency of, we talk about faith-based, these were sort of extreme rights, conservative-based families who were taking kids in and had no intentions of giving them back, and they won't find them. These little kids aren't coming back. You know, no one recorded information about them, and I have no faith that the families will give them up. You know, they, that same mentality that we know better. And, it, you know, and it's just really hard to see that happening in our own country. Uh, so we're going to talk about that issue. Okay, that issue on tomorrow. Sunday night and Monday. Yeah. And that's, let yeah. me stop the discussion to, in respect to the time. 
and uh, and just to, just to ask one question, 